folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of Prophetic Research Ministry with another Watchman video broadcast. We're going to be talking about two kingdoms today, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of, you know, that other guy that we don't want to talk about, the kingdom of Lucifer. Uh, what's going to happen in the future? What is happening right now to bring in what is going to happen in the future? And this was really brought to me. This whole idea was brought to me this week by many emails that people were sending me uh, concerning two men that we're going to deal with today. And I'm going to take a long way for us to get there. The first guy is uh, our old buddy Glenn Beck. The second one is Rick Warren. Now, both of these guys are tied together. Uh, now, obviously, they both work for the same person. Um, Rick Warren's books are all published by Rupert Murdoch and his publishing companies. Incidentally, Rupert Murdoch happens to own Fox News, which uh, was, is where Glenn Beck has his program on. So they both have the, sort of the same, same route here with Rupert Murdoch, who happens to be a Knights of Malta. Now, if you don't know what that is, uh, the Knights of Malta... It's a, it's a Roman Catholic um, uh, organ, it's sort of like a secret society. It's sort of like the Roman Catholic Church saying, uh, you're one of our guys, you're helping us, and so we're going to give you this honorary knighthood. And that's who Rupert Murdoch is, and he tells Glenn Beck what to do. And believe it or not, I think he has an influence upon Rick Warren. And we're, we're going to see that both of these guys have sort of the same, the same goal in mind and it's not God's kingdom. I can tell you that with a straight face or a round one. It's not God's kingdom that they're interested in. It's a different one. And I hope to educate you today concerning how you can tell the difference. You see, I happen to be on the side of, of God's kingdom. That's where I want to spend eternity. That's who I want to serve is God. There are other people out there that have chosen the other side for one reason or the other. Now, I hope to educate you a little bit just so that you understand what is the difference. And there always is a difference. It's the difference between light and darkness and night and day. So we're going to be talking today about the New Age movement, and there's a lot of people who really have heard the term. Maybe you say you kind of follow the New Age movement a little bit. You don't really know what it's all about. And so I'm going to educate you a little bit on what exactly the New Age movement stands for, what it's all about, who's promoting it. That'd be Glenn Beck and Rick Warren. You'll, you'll see it at the end. You'll see the biblical reasons why I'm saying what I'm saying to you today. So I hope to educate you on what the New Age movement is all about. And I was praying about how to do this this morning. So God, uh, you have to give me some insight here. God, give me some revelation. The Holy Spirit just dealt with me and said, Mike... Just give them the truth. And I immediately knew what he was talking about. So I want to start out with scripture today. I want you to read the scripture here. Revelation chapter 21 verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem. I want you to look at the words new here. New heaven, new earth. Um, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I want you to get this idea because this is really the original intention of God. God always intended to have a new heaven and a new earth, a new Jerusalem that was to be a picture. The whole thing is a picture now of Jesus the bridegroom and the bride of the church. And those two coming together and becoming the body, the new body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the plan of the ages. This plan you can trace all the way back to the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 2, God looked at the man whom Luke referred to as the Son of God, referring to Adam, the first Adam. And God saw the man and he said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him help meet for him. And so God created the woman, brought him to the man. The two became one flesh. This really is the, is the picture of of what is going to happen in the last days with a new heaven, a new earth, a new Jerusalem. And so we see that the marriage bond between a husband and a wife, 
Not between a husband and a husband. Not between a wife and a wife. Not between a husband and some other animal or anything like that. But between a man and a woman. This was the plan of the agents. And so you know that the devil is going to have something that kind of looks like that. But it's going to be its mirror image of what God had intended. But notice that he's talking about everything being made new. In Revelation 21 verse 3 the Bible says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now I'm going to stop right here, because I'm reading this verse, and I'm, I'm, as I'm reading this verse, and I see the glories of what God has in store for us in the last days, I see the opposite here. Notice that he's saying here, uh, that God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. I'm telling you that hell is the exact opposite of that. Hell is full of tears. Hell is full of death. In fact, it's the place of death. Hell is full of sorrow. And hell is full of crying. And hell is a place of absolute torture. It is the exact opposite of what God has in store. Notice verse 5. And he said, He that sat upon the throne, that's Jesus Christ, said, Behold... I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. God wanted these words written down because he wanted a record for mankind of what he intended to do, what he wanted to do, what he offers you and I, and that God offers us to make all things in our life new. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of the old stuff. I'm getting tired of the old world, the old flesh, the old sin nature. I get tired of these things, and I want God to make all things new. And I praise Him that He is going to do that one of these days with no crying, no sorrow, no pain, none of that. Think of the opposites now. Think of an opposite kingdom that the devil promises to those that follow Him. And I want you to think about that as we move on. I want you to notice also Revelation chapter 21 verse 10. The Bible says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. In verse 12 he says, And it had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates. And at the gates twelve angels... And names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And on the east three gates, and on the north three gates, and on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. I want you to notice this now, because we're going to be dealing, we're going to be dealing with the foundations here. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. So I want you to understand this. That the, the building of this new Jerusalem, this beautiful city that comes down from God out of heaven and bridges the gap between heaven and earth. This city has 12 gates. It has 12 angels. These angels represent the promises and the grace and the gifts of Almighty God. The 12 foundations are what it's based upon. And it's the foundations, it's the foundation, the Bible says, of the 12 apostles, which ultimately is this book that I hold in my hand right here. The very foundation of New Jerusalem is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the grace of God, the love that God has for all of mankind, and the fact that He takes us from being old and makes us completely brand new, eliminating all of our death, all of our pain, all of our sorrow, and everything like that. The twelve apostles, these are the men that wrote the, the books of the Bible, the, the scriptures, the doctrines that we have. Paul writing the, that love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that charity chapter. Things like, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. These are the men that wrote words like this. They were the very words of God. They are the foundation, number one, of God's